your life here. Welcome back to the early edition of the Hockey Nation Live Show. This is your co-host, is directly from the Sunshine State. Cold Frenchie back in the boot. And we have to go all the way to the West Coast. Uh, find a second co-host, uh, Michael DeVillano. Thank you, Pierre. I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday was Monday. I did a very good video about prospect and everything. Like that. So what I'm doing this guy is because I feel like I have nothing to do. I'm bored. <laughs> it's because you know, for two weeks it was unbelievable, Michael. It was like it was I crazy. Yeah. Shop anything. I could not follow it. I follow everything, but I could not set up everything. So what I do, I do a video during the day, and I reproduce every morning at seven o'clock a.m. It's live, but it's live. It's uh, published at seven o'clock a.m. every day. Now you have a new video about the Hockey Nation Live show. I'm going to go one per day, but that's fun subject. We turn like so. Today is about uh, my top ten. Honestly, we don't tell anybody at the top twelve, but it's a top 10 2022 prospect uh, NHL draft next year. Um, it's pretty amazing. A couple of great players there. Brad Lambert. That's the year, right? Did not play game last season, but uh, listen, the kid was like I don't know, thirty nine goals, something like that, in fifty one. Oh, he's he's uh, phenomenal, yeah. Real about that one. You have a you have a kid from Richmond, Michael. Uh, I'm going to screw oh, his name. Matt it's like, I'm sorry again. It's Matt V. Michkov. Yeah, uh, very good. I, I put him a little bit lower on my uh, top ten. I think I think he's six, but I think he could be like top three at some point after I review everything. Uh, but uh, that's a good one. You have also another risk called Yukov, T uh, Danila Yukov or oh, Yukov. Yeah. So I think the thing about Michkov is he's a late 2004, so he is a really a contemporary of Wright. However, he will not be drafted until 2005. So he's and he's already very physically mature. Pierre, he's he looks like he's going to be more of a stout. Yep. You know, he's not like 6'3", he's probably like 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 but he's he's a he's a heavy player. Man, he can shoot the puck. Like, he's like... Yep. <laughs> now, the USC team, we, we have a cool, Cooley. Cooley. Logan Cooley. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. He did, he's doing football. very well with the, uh, for the, the Cam Engineer in Calgary last week. And also, we have also um, Simus Casey. For the KC for the NT, wait, yeah, and I'm talking US about the office. NDTP right now. So yeah, that's yeah. I'm talking about them, about that one there. So a couple of the anyway, you check the video this morning is up. Uh, I suggest cool. everybody and click. Please leave some comments. Everything like that, that'd be great. Uh, I know he's already in this morning. Uh, I saw monkey. him in the chat. <laughs> but the monkey, he's the house this morning. <laughs> With Nicola, Nicola, Bono, Michael is always last night. Michael French, uh, the Frenchie quiz four people on overtime last night. Uh, oh, wow. Well, uh, Sly was impressive. Two and three, Sly last night go to overtime. Then we got um, Colin Smith. Uh, I think it's Colin Smith. When the 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 show last night, when the, the Frenchie quiz yesterday. And found a Rossi spooner and a Sly, and um, so we have a yeah. It was a lot of people last night at the show. Uh, a lot of people came back. We did, not, you know. I think now we can. It's a more consistency at nine o'clock p.m. Everybody knows now. We get more people come the night. So um, by the way, um, I cannot do it to you because I'm not on sharing. But uh, twelve hundred subscriber, Michael. We we go yesterday. Uh, now I think this morning was twelve seventeen, but um, twelve hundred another milestone for the Hockey Nation Live Show, and yeah, awesome. I cannot. I don't know if we can, but my goal is to get maybe fifteen hundred at the October when we start the season. Yeah. That would be I like impressive. That. About honestly, uh, this month we celebrate our first year at the wow. Hockey Nation Live Show <laughs> early edition in the morning, right? But honestly, that that. Um, that channel, at least for the Hockey Nation, like should start really more in the, uh, in January uh, with, with, you know, show in the morning, a couple of live stream, every time that we become really busy after that. And you can see that showing, honestly, the last four months where we grow a lot. 
a lot. Uh, like a normal good you know youtube channel so overall i think that's pretty it's pretty amazing what we are right now so uh, another good step but this is because everybody inside the the, the chat everybody support and they are you know uh they came back they are there every morning like nicola and um, william and uh, by the monkey right now i can see on the chat so yeah so we really we know this is kind of like the quiet period i think someone says kind of the boring part of the season we've gone through free agency we've gone through the draft so we'll 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 do some things to kind of plan i think for next year more more specific you know shows and content i think seattle and detroit are two things that i'll help focus on and we'll get some help on that over the summer it's probably a good time to reach out to coaches we know i can ask the coach in everett um, and each of those people have other connections that we can follow up with. Maybe some agents. We should invite Pat Brisson on. He's already. Not- we have two people, right? We have um, your buddies coming to August twelve for the WHL. The yeah, Greg. Whatever. Yeah. And then we have I have a uh, August something like next week or this week. Uh, the play by play from the American Hockey League, the Colorado uh, Eagles. Is it Eagles? Oh yeah, the Eagles, the Colorado. Yeah, Eagles. so CC Hockey. Is going to join me uh, the night at uh, some right. point. Um, I don't. I did not check the schedule yet, but I know he's already set up. So and then a P. Paranto is going to be at the end of the month in uh, August. So we're going to have a couple of guests like that. It could be the morning or the evening. Uh, join us, and uh, that thing will be good. To maybe to have also co- some color collaborator. They have already a YouTube channel, Michael, like Frank Wells, um, some like someone like him. We have a guy now. He does the Panthers for a year now. I invite I'm going to invite him maybe in the morning or the evening talking about the Panthers or something like that. But uh, I think that would be a good way to do that. Maybe five, ten, six, or eight on this month. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, how many left? I think there's like 65 or something, isn't it? 70. We yeah. are right now celebrate 70. Uh, I just made the, the the news right now, the post a couple of minutes ago. Uh, 70 days. So it's all about Kapriselov and Kulikov and Patrick Orvis are the three star of the day for 70 days before the season restart 2021. Honestly, October 12 is the first day of the season. Awesome. All right. Well, there, there are a couple stories that I wanted to just kind of touch on quickly that I didn't get to with you before. Um, you know, the, there's one article that's saying, you know, we were kind of like wondering about this. Oh, shit. Did I like navigate away? There we go. All right. Sorry. Um, when will Jonathan Taves play? Because the, what, what's interesting is, you know, we were kind of like wondering. He had made this big announcement that he was going to play this year. We know he missed the entire year with this odd, you know, I don't know if it's like an immuno response or a nervous system response. It's kind of strange. Um, the question now is like they're saying, yeah, he'll play at some point. So I don't know if they're going to be able to count on him for as an everyday player. So I don't know, like if maybe he moves in and out of the IRL, like the long-term injury, like he's got a $10.5 million salary. It's going to be kind of weird if they're counting on him to be the second line center, but he's only able to play 20 games or 50 games. Like we don't know the number. Yeah. Uh, this is a, it's going to be with time, all right? It's, you have to be patient with time. That is Iman, is it Iman, Iman system? Or what is called it? Like um, his illness is about his system of the yeah. body to recovery, it's everything weird. like that. So, so they are rejecting uh, food or some stuff like that. So he cannot perform about that one over there. So chronic for me, it's about yeah. uh, chronic Iman. There we go. So, um, you know, the key behind that is going to be t- patient and everything like that. I don't think so. They will push everything fast, right? It will have to get a couple of months. But again, that's the salary cap is removed $10 million on the, I think that right now, I don't have the, I can jump on it, but I don't have the, the salary oh, cap right I mean, now. But they're, they're right at the cap, I think, aren't they? I'm going there. I'll give you this they, right they now. They zero dollars at this point. They are zero minutes, so they right. expect like a six over the salary cap at that moment. They have 22 players right now, uh, so they have to figure out for Nalander and Hegel. Hegel. They're going to be signed up for sure this year, and then they have like, you know, a couple of players uh, they have to pick up, like maybe send to. So I'm not worried about the cap over there. Yeah. Um, because that's including Jonathan Toes 
including that. So yeah. they're going to be fine. But again, at some point, it's to see how he will respond every time. I think the only thing I can mention for right now, me, is I see like I have to see at the training camp what he will do every time. That right. can um, even can he even you know play the whole training camp. It really seems questionable. I, I think there's two contracts there that they would like to move somehow. One being Brett Connolly and one being Dylan Strom. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know I, I'm not sure what role. I think they both are obviously capable of playing in the NHL, but I'm not sure how much they're really counting on them. Well, I, I think at that moment, like I think they will. For me, they will because they have a uh, a couple more defensemen they should bring down yeah. on the cap friendly. So I'm not worried about the forward. I think they are good on forward. My concern for that one right now is more about Buck Strom, how he's going to react with it now. Yeah. Tyler Johnson is a good pick because right. Tyler Johnson, Michael, can he sizzle right wing, but he can he can play center. So yeah, I, I think he's a better center. And I, I think that if Taves is out, obviously he moves to the middle. They don't yeah. seem to be overly committed to Dylan Strom. They don't seem overly committed. I don't even see Brett Connolly in the top 12 yep. right now. So, you know, right there is like 9 million bucks or something in, in salary that you could see. But, you know, may, they're just expensive players if you're playing them part time. I don't love Calvin DeHaan because he misses a lot of games. And I think that they're short of D here. Like, I think that, you know, even Caleb Jones, is he an everyday player? I guess we're going to find out. I mean, I think he's, yeah, he's gone as a no, 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 the only one being be, you, you, I think you have a mistake there because you don't put Riley Stillman. I think well, Riley Stillman true. is maybe that's one of is better for what the at the bottom six over there. You, you're probably right. Like, and then we don't have there's not even Nylander in this. So once they sign Nylander, which you've got to assume is going to happen, I mean, I think Nylander is going to be an ongoing enigma, right? Like, he's got all the talent in the world and. He's just frustrating for a coach, right? Like you're gonna, it's like his brother, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, what happened there is the bottom six over there. That lineup will change with time. So right. uh, I think yeah. you can bring Kera also third line. I yeah. think Kera, uh, you know, like I think right now he's on the for center. Sure. I don't think so. He's a center, honestly. Who? Um, Jajar? Yeah, you know, he's a centerman. But they they play him in Edmonton more like a left wing. Uh, yeah, I think he's a pretty good centerman, though. That's what I I'm, I mean, for me, he's a pretty good fourth line center. He can even play third line. I, I mean, think he would play for me, he would play more third line as a winger over there if they have, because I think he that's what he bring over there. He can play also center, too. So they have a couple of moves. The key there is is to see, okay, what is Jonathan Toes can do? And also, what can uh, Box Trump can do over there? Otherwise, on the winger side, Michael, they have a lot of good player over there uh, yeah, at the, at the bottom because he's still missing Nalander over there, right? So Nalander could add more. You yeah. can move Kira on the right. Uh, Tyler Johnson is right there. Kusharev, Kusha, Michael, he could play on the second line. You can drop Strom. Um, yeah. So they, they have a lot, a lot of good. A goal is good over there too. Ryan Carpenter yeah. is Ryan Carpenter, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, and I my my feeling on Jajar is he's a much better centerman than a winger. Like he's a big guy down the middle. He doesn't play physical, but he is a good penalty killer, and he can win faceoffs. And I think the thing with him is if you put him on the wing, he kind of falls asleep a little bit. <laughs> if you if you if you say to him, "Listen, I need you," <laughs> he's the type of guy like where you've got to kind of give him a role and put pressure on him a little bit to like, "We need this from you. You can't let us down." <laughs> and I think he'll do it, right? Yep. Which is exhausting for an NHL coach, but you know, I think you get more out of him if you do that. I'm not sure if that'll happen, but um, got to believe the Sabers are losing leverage on Eichel. I don't think so at all. Uh, first of all, welcome back in our time. We miss we miss him, Michael. He was out for a couple of days. Don't know he was on vacation or he's doing something else, but he's back. We miss him last night. He was one of the winner of the the. Um, Frenchy quiz last week, Michael. Oh, he hit very well. I think he did a back-to-back -back win. Wow. So uh, great to see him aboard. Um, get up, believe are losing leverage more and more, and his equal price will lower. I think absolutely. You know think what, so. Michael he is right. Do you think so? What? Uh, because it's become public, right? And it does remind me Pierre Luc Dubois, yeah. uh, where he, everybody know what the situation and everything like that. The concern about this is right now is Michael something remove themselves 
because the injury of Hickel is going to be, if he's going on the surgery, he it's the surgery. first time uh, going to be applied to an athlete like a sport hockey players. No one did it by the doctor. The chance to be great is 99.9, but it's not sure yet. So a lot of teams are risky to give four players and return. Now, when, he, when I read his comments about now, I think they will losing Buffalo some. I think they will cannot give four anymore. I think they will drop at three because the injury when a lot of people are concerned about that one there. So the, the price to what it are demanding, they still stuck with there. That's the reason he's still over there. It's going to be dropped with the time about that. That's my point about him because <laughs> – they the literally injury. got nothing. They got absolutely nothing for Sam Reinhardt. So it's it's just to at this point, I don't know. Like they are a team of prospects. It feels like <laughs> it's so strange. Like they've gone from, you know, if you look at them on paper on a year ago, right now, there are there. I don't know. I guess it's down the middle with Middlestad and Cousins are still very good prospects who can play. They've shown they can play. Tate Thompson's shown he can play. Asplund's shown he can play. You have Olofsson at the top over there, right? So you have three players right there. Olofsson, and Middlestad, and Kozak. Kozak, no. So to to get him, I think it will take him a, a good prospect for sure, and then a regular player in NHL. Now, yeah. because the situation, I don't think they get a third player. I think it would be better for them to request one first round pick and maybe a second round pick if they want to go with four players. Yeah. If not, I don't think so. It would be a three players and a first round pick. I don't think so because of the injury. Now, they can also go that way over there and then maybe a request. The team would be said to them, maybe we don't give you the second round pick or the first round pick or something like that, or you're going to give. Uh, two million dollars retaining of the money, something could happen that way also. It's but uh, Montreal try did not work because they did not, so a lot of team try because but the the offer is not good enough and Buffalo is sick. But like it's getting is is yeah. getting ugly on both ways, and yeah. I don't see and anyway. I cannot imagine Jack Eagle wearing again this uniform or his jersey of Buffalo Saber. I don't see it. it it's He's not going to go there. I, I don't see he's going to no. get that. No, it's such a weird situation. I mean, the agents, they're not owed a trade. Like, the guy's under contract. They're fighting it out over the injury thing. There's a huge risk as a result of this to teams. It just, I don't know who's handling it worse. Like, Eichel's big part of the problem. But then you flip it and you go, they didn't fight very hard to get a good deal for Reinhardt. Like, why <laughs> you're you're being like really stingy on this deal and trying to fight it out, and then you're you just give it up to the, you know, like nothing. Like they're getting a late round first. It's lottery protected. They got junk back for a guy that was their best player for most of the year and not a problem in the dressing room. <laughs> yep. And then you've got this other guy that's got a huge, you know, salary. He's very questionable in the dressing room and he's got a physical injury that's very serious so i i don't understand what's going on over there it just seems bizarre to me yep i'll definitely about that welcome back kimberly and uh kimberly we missed the show last night so uh, she's here this morning welcome back uh, directly from the south florida west coast um but the monkey asked about kuznetsov and montreal uh, they could. It would cost them someone for sure. <laughs> a lot of price there, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how Kastanov can fit on the on their philosophy, on the brand. Or it's like me. I don't see Kastanov with Montreal. I don't see Kastanov with Islanders, example. So um, I, I, they can trade for him, but again, they would depend how much. But uh, the problem when you trade like that, Michael, it costs you at least one prospect. A good one, good player, elite, everything like that. Of course, yeah. Christian Agav, you send back Cook Enemy, you're winning uh, with the second because he's a great hockey player right now. But um, I don't know if it's 
the answer about that one there. Uh, I think Bergeron is going to be a patient. I think he will wait, see what it looked like in the first 20 game. That's maybe after that he will try to do something major if there's something wrong about that. But until then, I don't see. I see more patching at big, big move. They have depth at every position, Pierre. I think they're better than they were. You know, I understand the Shea Weber thing. I don't know if Price is healthy, but I think overall, they, you know, he the Hoffman move helps them. They'll get a full year of Caulfield with Suzuki. I think those are all bonuses, and it takes some of the pressure off of Toffoli and Anderson to be the only offensive weapons. So I think overall, they're they're in better shape than they were even at the end of the playoffs. Well, you know, I mean, if you look about this, I think that you have to reevaluate. I think Weber is going to be a big me, so I, I don't think so. Savar oh, is oh. close to Weber, so no, we no. we're not that one over there, right? Then after that, I think nobody pick Dano yet. They can be close to Dano, and I think the key on this one, Michael, is Ma is Matthew Perro. Um, Perro can be where I he can make a difference on that lineup over there. When I said that, is this way. Pero Michael, I think we don't give him enough credit. He scored a lot of goals in the NHL prior. Uh, he moved him from center to the left wing. Um, and I think that's what a guy can score 12 to 15 goals. I think if he can do that as a third center, yeah. and I think that would be a good plus. Tatar, Michael, it's Tatar, and you have Hoffman, and you're a winner on that one over there. So they are not better, but they are not bad at the end of the day. If the, the people are have a play, a better role like Kokanemi, Kokanemi can score 10, 15 goals, but he get a season 40, 45 points. If Peru can become a major um, third line center over there, I think they they I think it's they have inside the house. So they have a lot of people inside the house they can accomplish or get play a bit better what they did. I think they'll be fine. But to make the playoff, Michael is a white card. And, well, um, I agree. I mean, I think they went on an improbable run. They were in a special circumstance in the Canadian division that got them in. I, I think I understand people are like, they, they aren't better, but really the only missing piece is Weber. And it's not a like big, Weber, the big, right? big, and it's not small, but he, it's not like he's been healthy, right? He's a big deal when he's in the lineup. However, you didn't have Hoffman a year ago, and now you've added 30 goals. You have Cole Caulfield for a full year. That could be 25 goals. And I think Suzuki's shown he might be a 70, 80-point player. So Not I, I yet, but it'll be a 60-point player. One thing you yeah. said good about this, they don't have Caulfield. They got Caulfield now. The yeah. Hoffman is better to that out. And I believe me, Peru Michael is better to style and Perry. Yeah. You're, Perot is going to – here's the problem with Perot. Um, he just, he's overmatched at center a lot of times. He doesn't have a, you know, a lot of separation speed. And if you look at how he generates offense, it's usually from the high slot or from the wing. And, you know, that that's good. He's not a bad player. He's skilled. He's just smaller. And he's not going to be able to – he's got to be crafty. And, and so that's fine. You know, I think that's another weapon. And he might be in and out of the lineup because of that. But I think overall it's an improvement. Like, I don't I – don't, I think the question boils down to what do they do with the Druan situation – I don't see that working out long term, and I'm not sure how attractive he is to other teams. I, I think it's going to be better what we expect for him. I We're think also I would say one thing now they open up more is because Bob Biron is out for five months. So yeah, I think that we're helping them to fix sure. someone inside that part of there. I think the Cedric Parquet is not what I, my answer for him is not there. I think JK will be a play a better role for that part over there. Armia is concerned. Now they have to sign Kokenemi in the next couple of days or weeks. But I think overall they are not bad. The problem, Michael, is not in, and it's other team. The Panthers are better. Yep. Right. Oh, Tur yeah. No, no, the good news for them is this part. I think we don't give enough credit for them. I think we should give them a little bit better credit because, Michael, Panthers and Tampa are one step over anybody else in that division. They're so much better. And Boston, actually, wait, Montreal, though. Boston Carolina. Montreal, Toronto have the same problem. Where one Toronto don't have the left wing yet, and then Montreal and Boston don't have the second center anymore. So Boston is not better what it was before. And if you look you about this, it's better than a year ago. I'm saying again. Sorry, you, why why don't you think Boston is better than a year ago? 
they are not better. You don't think so? No, they lost David Kretschik. Yeah, that that doesn't help. That's for sure. So they don't have any center right now. So they have us. Yeah, if you think that, about that this, they don't have any anywhere to fix their problem yeah, there, and that's a big, huge one. You think about that over there. It is, and I, I think uh, Enertap brings up a good point that I was overlooking, which is the loss of Philip Dano. It there's bodies there, but I don't think you're going to replace what he brought to that team, and maybe it wasn't all on paper, right? Now, like, if you go to lose Dano. It's on face exactly. off, right? It's on the, on face off, all right, and a light, slightly, slightly on defensive. Oh, but for Jake sure. Even Michael can play that well. Yeah, I mean, in the end, he is an elite. He's he's in the class of Bergeron defensively. He's in the class of Ryan O'Reilly defensively. He we know he lacks the offensive punch, but I I don't see anybody in many teams playing that role that he plays. He, he's a unique person in the NHL that way. So I think, I think you're probably right, but I don't, I don't really know if they, you're probably right that they aren't better than just because of that. And I, so Weber and Dano probably should not be downplayed, but I do think you're getting a star player that you didn't have before in Cole Caulfield. So that's going to be the X factor for me. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to have a hard time. I think, you know, they'll have to make maybe one or two more moves to get out of this. And you are right. Like, I think the losing Krejci actually affects, in a bigger way, Taylor Hall. I do think you could move Craig Smith to the middle, but it's not a guarantee that every day he's going to be better. He's not going to be Krejci. Krejci is a pass-first guy. He's really always defensively in the right spot. And I, I just don't know how you replace that. Uh, and that's the biggest problem they have over there. Yeah, the only thing right. they we have to get a little bit more, Michael, is now a Jake DeBrus can become the same player he was before. Uh-huh. So that's the only thing at the bottom six can go over there. Otherwise, they don't have anyone there. They can fix their problem last, like Montreal. So I'm confident like Montreal are equal like Boston over there. I'm confident right now Toronto are not better this year than it was last year. Like, if I, at, I don't know. I, I think Boston will probably surprise us because we, we're overlooking a couple of pieces they did add. Eric Halla can absolutely move into a second line center spot. The, the problem, problem Eric Halla, Michael, the last two years, he did nothing. Well, that, that's not true. He, he produces at a 0.5%. Like, he's a very good third line centerman. The problem with him is health. He's always hurt and he misses games. So that's kind of an issue. But Game in, game out, he's a very useful player. He can produce offensively. He doesn't usually play with your best offensive players. So I think that does help them. We don't know what Jack Stunichka is going to do. They are projecting him as a second-line player, but I think that's to be determined. I don't, you know, He was a high draft pick. He's a U.S. development team player, and he is capable, but you know, it's an X factor. We have no idea what this guy is going to deliver. Nick Foligno is another player that I keep forgetting they brought in. So he brings leadership. He can contribute kind of third line minutes. I know he can play center, but I don't see him in everyday center, Pierre. So I don't know. They, they've And then on defense, they have made some moves. So I, I do like the Derek Forbart move. He played very well in Winnipeg. And Mike Riley, I think, was a great addition at the end of the year. And then in goal, like, you know, I think they – Listen, they don't have Tuka Rask, but Swayman is looking like the next generation for them. He's always been a high-end goalie. And I really like Linus Olmark. If he's healthy, he can be a very good day-to-day goalie. Like, Buffalo with him was night and day, with and without him. So, I don't know. I think they're going to be competitive. But in the end, I think it's like, you know, Tampa, Florida, and Carolina, they're in that top tier. And then I, I just don't know like where, where Montreal fits. If they're going back to their normal division, like it's going to be real tough. They're going to be fighting out for a wild card no matter what. And But I think Boston will surprise us. They have an elite top line, and now they got a little bit more depth. So I think they'll be okay. I don't like them. But I don't say they would be <laughs> not good. I just yeah, said they, they are not bad or they was last season. It, I think it'll be too, it really depends on that second line center role. That's the only thing. And that's a big piece. Like that's what I'm talking sure. about. That, that's what I. The reason I said that's because they don't. They lose Krachik. He's about forty for thirty eight or forty point of thirty four point forty two games. Absolutely. Something like that. 
So they go to missing them. You, you you know what I mean? Like they 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 miss what 15 goals of Richie. Richie is out. So someone at the bottom six have to score there. Is it Fonino? Is it Ola? I don't know. That's why they have to figure out that one over there. Yeah, I think I think the problem with Richie is the speed. He doesn't fit that quickness and closing gaps on Debrusque to me. I, I like you know, if you could actually get Ryan Strom for Jake Debrusque, then hats off to you. Because Ryan Strom to me would solve that problem here. He's he's very capable of being an excellent second line centerman. We see how he works with Artemi Panarin. He's a pass first player. He's good on faceoffs. He's a good 200 foot player, and he can get you 50, 60 points in the right circumstance. So if you could bring in a Ryan Strom, that would absolutely solve this problem. I, so I agree with that. I just don't know if anybody at this point believes Jake DeBrusque is a player they want on their roster. And I. Good morning to Eagle, by the way. Good morning. Thank you for Rusty for joining us. Uh, Greg is here as well. And then Anthony Menzeno, your friend from Florida, is here. Uh, you you know, I'm, I'm also forgetting that they got they brought in Thomas Nosek, and he played a really good role in Vegas. So they're probably better a little bit if they can solve that second-line center. And I think at some point Stunichka does it, but I don't know if it's this year. I mean, he's... He's still a bit of an X factor for me. Um, all right, so let's see. The other thing I wanted to just touch on, what do you think of the Ryan Murray signing in Colorado? Um, well, this is just depth. I think, yeah. you know, it's a three. I, I don't know. I'm now with 4.0 with him now. When I said that, they have... Mekar, they have Giraud, they have BRAM, and I think that's another one. Uh, puck mover, carry on the puck very well. Yeah, uh, that's what he does. That's pretty much it. And I think they have that's what Giraud is already. This is just in un case someone hurt everything like that. But honestly, it's not going to be a big factor uh, on the defensive side. I just surprised two million dollars for him. But again, um, you know, I would give him one, one, one million, maybe one point five. But again, just the depth. That's pretty much what they have. I think that's show to me they don't expect too much about Eric Johnson, I think. And then they, they just add uh, just the depth. They have any other UFRI Michael uh, player like him on the defense right now. So the rest was Chara, uh, um, Gustafson, and is it D. Joe's or something like that? And that's it. They have nothing oh, else right now on the UFRI. And I, you know what, actually, I, I thought Detroit would re-sign him. I thought he played pretty well in Detroit. He's a good 5'6", Christian Juice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Coach, I have to go to a game. So Patrice Bergeron's son, formerly Brad Marchand's son, thank you for joining us. Later, Patrice. Any news on Tarasenko? I haven't heard anything specific except that he ain't going to play in St. Louis. <laughs> Uh, Terrence and Go right now, the news is Terrence and Go is going to be trade the next couple of days. Yeah. Uh, Islanders are on the race. The New Jersey Devils are on the race. Expect a forward is going to be trade to the New Jersey Devils, Michael. I would not be surprised Tata is going to New Jersey. Um, I, sp I didn't have spoke, but I'm listening. Um, Alain Nesteretin, uh, Aston coach and French yesterday, and he was mentioned about the he think Fitzgerald is not done yet. He's looking for add one forward. And I think the Tarasenko, the Tata are really what I believe they would maybe looking or looking for that. But Islanders are right now um close to make the trade. The problem is about the they have the what I heard the retaining money is a problem right now between Lamarillo and um uh, I'm strong, Doug. I'm strong right now, but I will not be surprised there would be trade in Islanders or um, Devils for Tarasenko. Yeah, yeah. Devils seem like they're trying to make some moves, so it'll be interesting to see if if this is another piece they can bring in to try to get to respectability. It feels a little bit patchwork quilty, you know. They got some players though that are emerging, so I gotta think that. Adding a player like that would really help them out. And eventually I think so, though. I think like yeah. a Tatao could be another element. If they can get, I, I think Tatao is looking for three plus. But if they can get Tatao, a three years contract, Michael, at $2 million, I think that will help the Devils right now. A little bit. I don't know. There's some better players there, Pierre, for me that are younger. 
I, I would not want to take away that time. Like I think Zaka showed last year, he's like got the ability to take another step. I really like Sharagovich. I mean, he, if you look back at his numbers, he's probably a 25 goal scorer. You look at Holtz coming in. Holtz has played pro for a number of years. The reason already. Michael has said that to you is they don't only, they have only 10 forward. And they have two players they did not sign yet. Uh, yeah. Kukaninen and Sharakovich. I'm so they need favorite. forward. They need buddies. Maybe. Let's take a look. I think that what's missing there is probably Holtz. So I don't know if they're counting him right now. Like you don't see Holtz in this scenario and you've got Kukanen and Sharagovich that they've got to sign. So to me, this is a guy that can play top six. No problem. He's shown that Michael McLeod will take more time. Like he'll get more and more ice time. Uh, Johansson, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Hopefully it's not dead salary. But I think the guy that's missing from this equation are two players. One is Alexander Holtz, and the other one is Nolan Foote. And I think both those guys are ready to step in and make some sort of a contribution. And I would hate to see – I mean, now, Tarasenko, you absolutely are going to grab that guy. <laughs> um, does that get them in the playoffs? I don't think so. So I don't know if Tarasenko wants to go there. So it's a, it's a big question mark because he's – to me, you can't count on Tarasenko just because of the injuries the last year or two. The guy, you know, Tatar to me doesn't get them over the hump either. So why would you want that? I don't know. I think to me, you just give these guys more playing time. You wait for Dawson Mercer to be able to make a contribution. And then they've got a real good um, defenseman coming in, Kevin Ball. So I think you just be patient with these guys. Like, give them another year. Well, the defenseman is set up properly right now they have enough they have seven or eight yeah that's i mean at some point kevin ball takes one of these guys jobs right like well, they would gonna... wait one more year because Sub Subban is waiting is leaving next year right i think yeah. maybe he's better to jeros i think that will be someone i'm not sure about jeros there yeah uh, the other bottom the, the top six is there hamilton severson graves sigandeller and smith over there that great fire defenseman right there they have Subban there too so I agree with you, Greg. I think the Boston's going to really miss this guy. Um, Underrated in NHL. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> one of the, the – uh, Mike, if you think about this 32 team in NHL, maybe one of the top best, top three best center, number two in NHL. If you go team by team, right? And yeah. I think he's the best top – you know, you, you compare, like, I understand Tavares behind Matthews and Kosinikov behind – Backstrom example, right? But I'm talking about maybe one of the top three best center second line in NHL. He, he really has been. It's just it's going to be tough to replace him. So Absolutely. yeah, I, I think that when the PK Subban contract rolls off, I don't see them re-signing him. And I think you just need to give time. Ty Smith is just going to take more and more responsibility. He's going to get better and better. He's going to have some little bumps, but his overall trajectory is up. And I think Kevin Ball is like a big. Well, guy that, first of all, Michael, they get nine million dollars out, right? So they're going to have a lot of money to sign another good defenseman, top four in NHL on UFA yeah. next season. So that's not a problem. They get that money also to sharing with other players right there. So oh, I think yeah. what they do is they still have twenty-one million dollars. So what are you going to do with uh, the Russian kid? They will send maybe sign him. They have enough money, right? They give him a good contract anyway. That's so I'm not worried about that one over there. Uh, well, you have to give credit to Tom Fitzgerald. I believe he's getting better and better as a GM. He's doing an amazing, great job over there. Or we'll see what they're going to do for sure. Uh, for Rusty Spooner, I would say to you guys, take be patient, uh, Rusty. Everything will be fine. Just wait. Lou Demarillo is coming with a big, big splash the next couple of days. And you're going to see he's going to pronounce about five five things happening. Signature, Zizikas. With uh, Zajac and Pamiri Michael, he's already signed for what I heard. Uh, yeah. They already signed also Pellet's uh, contract over there. They have to negotiate Beauvillier. And then after that, the next thing they do a big move is Tyrus and Co. So um, I think and right now that's, that's what's happening. They will sign after that, so uh, Sorokin. So um, it will happen at the same time. So that's what yeah. you have to be patient a little bit about that one over there. Um, 
So that will happen. I don't know, Anthony. I have no question this morning. Something wrong yeah, here. That's uh, all right. <laughs> Eagle Frank is in the house. We missed Eagle last night. Was not there. Uh, welcome back, buddy. That would be great to see you this morning. And then I, I be, now I'm going to be, make you because I think it's the second time I see this. Um, I had Buddy Monkey. You observe right the the wall or make the the ad will be on the long long wild card. But I will say to you something in our tap. Dano is a loss, but it's not a huge loss. I I think that they're gonna I think that they're gonna miss him a lot more than we acknowledge. <laughs> if you you're going to see Michael, <laughs> you're going to see Michael how you're not going to miss him a lot. We're gonna find out. <laughs> and the reason why, because you're going to have more productivity on an offensive side. I, I think I think what he does though is like throw back to a Guy Carboneau, like where you're not worried about what he's producing offensively. He's going to contribute offensively, but he just takes the sting out of the other team's top players. And that's really tough to do. Like you don't so see. He, no, to I'm do going that. to slide another way right now, but I could be wrong or tell me something. And I, I don't know how I can tell you that. All right. Take, take example. And again, you, <laughs> it could be wrong here. I'm going to do something, but take off Patrick Bergeron, okay? Out, yeah. snack and Greg Smith. Put Dano with that line. Do you believe Pat Snack is going to produce and Greg Smith, they're going to produce with or Martian, Pat Snack, and Dano versus Bergeron in the line. No, but it, that team is built very differently. You're talking about the top line in the NHL, and he's not that, right? He's the top, but he did play top line minutes for Montreal. Okay, he's so not, I would change my question. Taking out, you're taking out a 30 goal scorer. <laughs> follow me now. Follow me. <laughs> now, you put Gallagher with an, an offensive center. Do you believe Gallagher score more and produce more, or without Dano, or with Dano? Um, yeah, I mean, I do believe that that is a problem in Montreal. They need an offensively talented centerman. They don't have it. Well, they have Kukanemi. So Kukanemi is not. Yeah, Kukanemi. He's going to feed oh. up. Those guys, that's why Kukanemi is going to get a 40 assist in the NHL at one day. Not maybe not next year. My point here is Gallagher is going to produce more this year because he's going to be with more an offensive center where now it's going to be differently. They're not going to be back down on the defensive side all the time when they play with Dano with Tata or Dano with another one. Now he have to go forward more because now you have more the system change without another center with more offensive versus defensive. I just don't think he's better than Dano offensively. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't see any indication that this guy is an everyday offensive threat. I mean, he's done absolutely nothing to indicate that. You know, he had, he had good numbers here, but I mean, you can see he's just all over the map. Like he, his passes and, I just don't see it. <laughs> You're going to see Kokanemi this year about 15 goal and 30 assists. Yeah, I mean, if he did that, you'd be happy. But you know why, Michael? I will tell you why. Because he played about 14 minutes per game. Now he's going to play 17, 16, 17. He's going to be more on power play. He's going to be more ice time because he's a second center now. If they get a, a better center now, we change completely my conversation. Because he become now the second center, now he have more time on the ice. The proximity will be a little bit better. Now, again, I'm not said he's going to be 60 points. I'm not said no, I don't even but think at that point no. he's going to add more proximity about that one over there. So my point to you, Dano is going to be last at some point but not on the specific, like, it's a big, big loss like people are taking. I, I think we're downplaying a little because he doesn't show. He's a 45-point player who is over 50% on face-offs, kills penalties. And That's what you're going to be saying about. I know PK, Michael, I don't too much worry. 
Because Montreal yeah. have a good PK. They Jake do. Evans, Lekonen, Armia, that's Suzuki that's can play there. But where you go to miss him on the defensive side, on the PK, everything like that, Even on the long time race, you're going to miss him a little bit more, right? But the set is a big, huge. I'm not agree with that. Yeah, I, I think it'll hurt them enough that it's not like you're removing a franchise player, but in a sense for Montreal, he's, you know, he's definitely was a top line minute guy, and I don't see anything. Cooking That's why I disagree when he got a six year at 5.5. I'm not agree with that three. It's crazy contract, Pierre. <laughs> it's like, but you know what? LA is in a position where they don't care. Like LA's best days are with the younger, cheaper guys. Like they've so much talent on that forward line that it's just going to start popping through, popping through. I mean, so they're again, and that's that we, not and that's that we don't miss him. I just yeah, said I not. Uh, it's not a big loss. It's a loss, a good loss, but not a big. Yeah, I think it's bigger than we're playing it down, but it doesn't matter. I, I think it'll be interesting to watch. I think he'll have a huge impact in LA. Like I think they're going to love the way this guy plays, and he adds. I mean, him. And Kopitar, and then the young centerman around them. We're gonna find out how good he is, and he'll just—he'll bring that what he brought to Montreal will just be amplified because they have—they have a lot of really good players around him. Um, anyways, all right. So we have about seven minutes, Pierre. Uh, I was a little bit surprised at this one signing, which is Derek Stepan. I don't anticipate him playing a big role in Carolina. However, he gets one point three million dollars. Um, it's, it's again, it's a rip, uh, it's another Murray situation over there. Maybe, I think yeah. they, they lost full gel, and just in case something could happen, Michael, the, the he bring first of all is he have experience in NHL, he, he played for what over 10 years, 12 oh, years yeah, now, 12 years, yeah. right? And he played with uh, you have a good number with the New York Rangers. I think he can still bring something like that, but again. I think they need something at the bottom six. I, I fit. I see him very well, Michael, with Jordan Salt. I don't know, man. He's a centerman by trade, and I just don't see any room for him. If you're going to put him on the wing, he gets that much. He's he's going to be reliable, but his offensive production always leaves you wanting. He's older now. He's you're right. He's been laying around 12, 13 years. I bet yeah. something like that. And you know, we don't. If you watch this team, if Ryan Suzuki is really going to be on the roster, Ryan Suzuki is capable of being a top six NHLer very soon. Like people don't realize how good this player is. It's going to be like Martin Neckish. He's just like a little younger than him, and he's. Going I'm to not agree him to be there right now on the top top line yeah. over there. It'll be interesting to see if he can stick every day right now. But he's not far off. Like you know, maybe it's not this year. Maybe that's why you need to step in. I think honestly, uh, you know, I mean, like they they, they give that that with that part. I think they can remove Lorenz a couple of games, and then you bring uh, Stefan as a center number four yeah. over there, right? I think yeah. right now the biggest problem that they have right now, Michael, is this part: is they have uh, this, they have money, but they have to find this find a way to sign Shnemdikov, and that's what they have to go there. What I like, what he did, Michael, they, they stay on the same path. Is they have Nobody over six million dollars, five million point five Michael on the defensive side. All right. And that's yeah. what they, they are good about that one over there. And next year, uh, you know, the problem they have right now is loud, uh, you know, on it's a Jake Gardiner contract at four yeah. million dollars. That was yeah. a mistake <laughs> about that. I love what they did with Young Cole. Uh, yeah, I think I, I like think that. they did very well with D'Angelo and yeah. Bear and Brendan Smith. So I like the the they changed the way to get there. I think the only problem they have right now is a little bit another good player forward at some point. And yeah. again, that all can fit well over there. I don't see him getting any ice time. I mean, I think third line, Michael. <laughs> yeah, he's not. Maybe I don't know. Third line I, over there. I feel like we don't. We you know, if you look at the top line, Aho, Teravainen, um, and Svechnikov. And then the second line with Vin, Vinny Trocek, it's there's not a lot of room for, even on the third line with this guy. With you know, you got Niederreier and Trocek on the second line. Martin Nekesh is up there. I don't know. I, I've he might 
he just feels non-impactful to me on this lineup. But maybe, you know, they got room. If they can sign Svechnikov to, like, I don't know, do they do seven and a half mil for this guy? Uh, I think he can get a seven million. He's only 21, right? So yeah. can he go with a three years contract? You know yeah. why you remind me a little bit? It's what about like a Martin um, Jordan, uh, well, it's Matthews Barzo. So three years, a seven, six point five, seven million dollars. I think that would be good for him. That gave them a twenty-five, maybe at that moment, or twenty-four, and then after that, he can resign another three, at uh, three years over there. I think here's the challenge: like they're realizing Nekesh might be their best player. <laughs> oh, Martin Nekesh, Michael is a, six, a top six. He is easy. He's but he, easy. You know, my, the, the guy, he, he produced yeah. like crazy last year. Oh, yeah. Like, his numbers are right on par with Svechnikov in yep. goals and assists. And a lot of games, he was their best player. And he's he's playing a lot of wing right now. He's very capable of playing center. And you're right. He's bigger than I thought he was. Like, he's he's might be – he's not much smaller than Svechnikov. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you about that one for sure. Yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting. I think that if you give Svechnikov $7 million, you might be giving him $7 mil pretty soon. I, I agree. I, it it depends on the longevity of the contract, right? So yep. if he's going four or five years, I think they will drop a six. But if you go at $3 yeah. million, dollars, it's six point five to $7 million there. It's definitely going to be interesting. I All think right. that'll be a good one about that. Again, to as to respond um, to another deck is Zachary West. Welcome back. Uh, said Bakiki is strictly a solid third center, center man. I understand he's 20 years old. I understand that. But they have to open up more. Like earlier, Michael said it's time to give more ice time to Ren Suzuki. It's more ice time to give more younger players. I think it's the time to show to him the first 20 game, Michael. Let him play second, second center. See what he looked like. If you know that. My point is Dano is a loss, a big loss, but not bad. The, you're going to miss more Weber, Shea Weber, at what Dano is at the end of the day because he's not only off uh, on eyes. You're missing a lot of off eyes of what Shea Weber. He, Shea Weber, my kid, you don't have to skate. The respect <laughs> you give to him for what yeah. he accomplished, what it is. True. It reminds me yeah. a little bit what Larry Robinson was for the Montreal Canadiens when all the saw was out of the team. You Robinson he was walking. <laughs> now, you know what I mean? Like, that's what he is, Shea Weber, right? But I'm excited, excited to see Philip Dano in Los Angeles because I want yeah. to see I what he looked like. Up. I want to see his TOI, everything like that. But um, it's a big, big over there. Thank you so much, John Gregor. When I look at Ryan... This key, it reminds me a little bit Edward Marty St. Louis or Vincent Le Cavalier. I would not be agree with Vincent Le Cavalier. I think um, he's neither. I don't think he's either. It, Ryan is very similar to Nick. <laughs> yeah, he's a little bit bigger than Nick too. Like if you look at him, he's almost six two. He's like six one and a bit. I think, I think Nick is more talented. Uh, overall, I think Nick have a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit edge over Ryan. Um, I, I think Nick is going to be a, a better career in NHL at the end of the day. But Ryan, but Ryan, he will make uh, a good, good, good for the Carolina with time. Uh, oh, good yeah. pick for them. Yeah, he's listed at six foot, Pierre, but I think he's actually six one and a bit. He's, I think he's a more of a pass first guy. Whereas Nick is definitely has more, uh, probably a better shot. And that might be the difference between them. I think people are sleeping on him. Um, no, no, I don't say he's not, he, he, he's not good. I just said, yeah, I no, believe I'm, me, I'm, Nick is a little bit superior I, I as a player. I think Nick will have a lot more goals in the NHL. So. I think Ryan Suzuki might be what you want for a Kokanyemi. Like, and I think he'll be that 15, 20 goal. 30, 40 assist guy. That's probably what he is. If you play him on the wing, you might not get everything out of him you would want, but he could be a real good second line center somewhere. And I don't know if it's in Carolina because they got so much depth at center. It's crazy. But short term. Larry Robinson, Legion. Oh, yeah. Michael, I'm talking about Antem Arens scale. He said other eyes. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Marty St. Louis was like a tank and 
Vinny Le Cavalier was like Jean Beliveau 2.0 or something. Yeah. No. I thought to find, like, I don't see in my mind right now. Is you have to find a, a guy 5'11 right now. Um, well, I mean, Le Cavalier was like 4 and Sandy was 5'6. Five, 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 <laughs> five, <six. laughs> so you have to go in the middle of that on, on right, both wise over there. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, you know, honestly, Ryan Suzuki might be Ryan Strom. That might be what you're looking at. You're looking at Ryan Strom, where he you play him with good players. He's going to make sure that he's like a glue guy, but he's not going to be the star impact guy. I think Nick's got the ability to score timely goals because he's got a great shot. And he's, he's a better shooter than Ryan. But Ryan, I think, could be like a, you know, Ryan Strom, Ryan Suzuki might be the closest analogy, I think. I would tell you a play because you talk about Tampa Bay, Michael. I think. This is key. Remind me a little bit. Palat is 5'11. That size on that one over there. Not says compare like he could be a carrier like him. I just said, like, that's what I, about the size the players is. This is key. about the same size. Isn't he? I'm sorry. Pull out like 6'2. No, 5'11. Is he? Yeah. Really? Andre Palat. Yeah. I don't know why I always thought, yes, he's listed six, so he might be right. Yep. I don't know why I always thought he was a little bigger. Yep. No. But yeah, that might be, you know, that might be similar. I, I think tried to find something compared. Like he, he talked right. about Le Cavalier and uh, St. Louis. Yeah. I tried to bring him a player from yep. Tampa Bay. That's what a kind of player like him. Yeah, that might not be a bad comparison, except I, yep. I do think Ryan can play center. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I just tried, you know what I mean? I tried to find a player for him to understand. That's my point yeah, here. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right, Pierre, anything else you want to wrap up with? What are we going to work on tomorrow? What do we got going on later today? Uh, tonight we are back at 9 o'clock uh, Eastern time for the the Power Play show. A resume of the day for sure with French, uh, French uh, quiz at the end of the day. But uh, we're going to talk about um, the top prospect 2022 a little bit tonight. Uh, about what it was the video we did today, if you turn that. Also, I'm going to talk about the, the bad contract in NHL um, happenings on the UFA. Uh, example, like they spent too much money on the specific player. Example, like Ellen, Alex Wenberg, right, or Philip Dano. So I'm going to go through that route tonight. And of course, Thursday night is the 2013 draft. We're going to rebuild, redo on that one over there. So it'll be like yeah. tonight. Awesome job. Thank you very much, Pierre. I look forward to talking again tomorrow. Have an amazing great day, everybody. I will see you tonight. Oh, by the way, um, we have, uh, <laughs> I want to show this before we go. Um, we have, uh, I, you did not, I don't know if you know that, but um, Adam Ber Ber Berge Berger cannot come in morning anymore because he's back at the school. He's a teacher. Oh, okay. But he's a great swimmer. Oh, really? Yeah. So we find him a sound effect now every time we show up the oh, night. There you go. We got him. Uh, do, you, do you remember also we have usually Chainsaw Man? Yeah, Chainsaw Man, yeah. Excellent. There we go. So we build now uh, the, where they are like associate, you know, where they yeah, have the okay. passion, do something like that, like Sly is a bowler. So we try to make some stuff like that for them the night. So it's good to see this. I don't know if you know, so. but Chainsaw Man is an anime. Yeah. It's like a very famous like anime. Have a great one, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next time. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock Eastern time.